Parfait, tu vois, c'est a lovely entrepreneurial adventure launched 16 years ago by 30 something Jose Neves. But Farfetch will probably not stand the test of time in its current iteration. Let's analyze what and who drove Farfetch and how Farfetch was driven into the ground in less than five years. We all need to hear cautionary tales and the Farfetch story definitely fits into this category. Future fashion entrepreneurs, saddle up. What is Farfetch? Farfetch was incorporated at Companies House in October 2007 as the private company limited by shares Farfetch.com limited by José Neves, a Portuguese national in London, in the UK. The company name was changed twice in May 2010 and then in June 2013 with the name Farfetch UK Limited still in existence today. In 2007, José Neves' vision was to create a business that would use the same technologies that were transforming other consumer sectors such as the music and film sectors, for example, for shopping fashion products. Jose's plan was to create a world-class infrastructure supported by a top-notch team and then put all that to the service of the world's most interesting retailers and their websites. Since some of the best brick and mortar fashion boutiques around the world despite having a powerful eye for curation, were not able to fund, set up and manage their own e-commerce operations to scale their business beyond their local markets, Farfetch seemed to bring them an appropriate solution. This combined with the fact that Farfetch did not take on the risk of owning inventory made it a compelling business model that attracted the interest of venture capitalists, such as Advent Ventures, now um, in its second iteration, Felix Capital, and Advent Ventures founder, Frédéric Cour. Mr. Neves and its venture capital investors pushed over the years Farfetch to expand and grow to realize the vision of becoming the Amazon of the fashion industry, a platform upon which the whole industry could operate its e-commerce businesses. Today, Farfetch, one of a few global online retailers for high-end merchandise from a range of fashion labels, works with more than 1,400 fashion boutiques and sellers in 190 countries. In 2015, Farfetch bought Browns, the London fashion boutique, which had a flagship store on Brook Street. Now the brick and mortar location of this flagship store is disused and vacant in Brook Street in London. I know because I often pass in front of it when I go to a uh, shopping in the, in, in, uh, the West, in the West End and Mayfair, and it's completely vacant. As consumer appetite for buying luxury goods online began to grow, Farfetch also started working directly with fashion brands to build their websites and back-end operations. Through Farfetch platform solutions, the company also offers a host of e-commerce services to brands like Burberry and Ferragamo and department stores like Harrods and Bergdorf Goodman. In 2017, Farfetch bought the intellectual property from Condé Nast's failed e-commerce venture, Style.com, a brand that the company has never used. In 2019, Farfetch became a public company listed on the New York Stock Exchange via Farfetch Holdings PLC, a public limited company organized under the laws of England and Wales and a wholly owned direct subsidiary of Cayman Islands-based Farfetch Limited. At the $20 initial public offering price, Farfetch deputed its IPO with an approximate market capitalization of 508 billion US dollars. 
The same year, Farfetch acquired New York-based sneaker and streetwear reseller Stadium Goods, opting to pay $250 million for the sneaker startup in a combination of cash and Farfetch stock. In 2019, Farfetch ramped up its shopping spree with a $675 million takeover of the Italian holding company New Guards Group, which manages the design, production, and distribution for a range of um, global brands, including Off-White, Reebok, and Palmangels. This acquisitive move, doubled by a report of larger-than-expected losses, wiped out more than $2 billion of far-fetched market value in a single day in 2019. Unfettered, José Neves, the founder of Farfetch, bought a $200 million stake in American department store Neiman Marcus for Farfetch, and in 2022 struck a deal to buy 47.50% of a shareholding of Ux net Porte the underperforming e-commerce platform from the Richmond Group, in exchange for the issuance of a 12% shareholding in Farfetch to Richmond. That partnership was cleared by the European Commission with respect to antitrust and competition law checks in October 2023. Meanwhile, Farfetch acquired Los Angeles-based luxury beauty retailer Violet Grey at the beginning of 2022, only to put it up for sale barely a year and a half later in October 2023, further to shuttering its beauty division in August 2023. And then in November 2023, so around a month ago, when Farfetch issued a press release, backtracking on its initial intention to announce its uh, uh, third quarter 2023 results, its shares started to tumble, losing more than 50% of their value. Mid-December 2023, so around a week ago, two years after Farfetch peak valuation at a pandemic high of $26 billion in February 2021, Farfetch market value shrank to less than $238 million with its shares losing more than 97% of their market value since its IPO in 2018. In mid-November 2023, British investment firm Bailey Guilford, formerly Farfetch's largest investor, sold nearly half of its shares in the platform, keeping a 7.53% stake only. On the 18th of December 2023, Farfetch provided a business update on its website, confirming that it had entered into an emergency and lifeline 500 million US dollars bridge loan facility with Athena Topco, a Del Delaware limited partnership owned by South Korean e commerce group Kupang Inc. Kupang Inc. is also listed on the New York Stock Exchange and it is backed by Japanese bank SoftBank Group Corp which is also famous for owning, I mean, investing in brands such as Uniqlo. In exchange, Farfetch will delist from the New York Stock Exchange and a partnership between Coupang and the investment firm Green Oaks Capital Partners will acquire Farfetch through a pre-pack administration in the UK, which is a quick process used to facilitate selling all or parts of the assets of an insolvent company. So Farfetch is insolvent. We have the same business update. Farfetch also informed the public that its partnership with Richmond to purchase 47.50% of Ux Net Apporte, um, the adoption of Farfetch platform solutions by Ux Net Apporte and the Richmond Maison, as well as the launch of Richmond Maison e concessions on the French marketplace, had terminated with immediate effect. So Richmond doesn't want to have anything to do any further. With Farfetch. Farfetch shares on the New York Stock Exchange were suspended after slumping 35% in pre market US trading before the public announcement on the 18th of December 2023. So Farfetch shares are no longer tr tradable on the New York Stock Exchange as of today's date. 
So how and why is Farfetch in such dire straits? A combination of factors have brought Farfetch to the brink of extinction, many of those self-inflicted. Firstly, Farfetch veered too far away from its cautious approach to fashion e-commerce, jumping with both feet from 2015 to 2023 in overpriced, underprepared, and badly executed multiple acquisitions of brick and mortar fashion brands and retailers, as well as e-tailers, and their inventories. Not only did this scattered M&A strategy massively increase the financial risks underpinning Farfetch's business, but it also seriously emptied the coffers of this startup, whose current cash flow resources stand at $630 million. And this scattered M&A strategy also saddled it with debt, in particular, $600 million of convertible notes shared equitably between Richmond and Alibaba Group Holding Limited to be converted into cash or shares in 2026. Also, Farfetch's erratic growth approach without a well thought out business plan caused both the fashion industry and unforgiving financial markets, such as the New York Stock Exchange, to no longer understand the company's increasingly complex vision. And Farfetch never consistently made a profit since its IPO. So investors, stakeholders in the fashion industry and financial markets doubt that it may be able to get back on track. Moreover, clearly the leadership of Farfetch, and in particular Jose Neves, is incompetent. Although Mr. Neves currently owns only 15% of the company's shareholding, he founded in 2007, he still has 77% of the vote on Farfetch's executive com committee. While he sacked all the independent members of Farfetch's board and all committees of Farfetch, as confirmed in the business update dated 18th of December 2023, the board still consists of Jose Neves. It is probably the insistence by Mr. Neves to keep on staying at the helm of Farfetch, despite his proven abysmal record track record of incompetence and poor management that has ultimately deterred the likes of Amazon, Alibaba, LVMH, Richmond and Caring from rescuing Farfetch out of its misery. They know that while Mr. Nevis is in charge of Farfetch, nothing good can come out of it. Finally, the economic conditions for e-tailers are tough. Post-pandemic, as um, luxury e-commerce players such as Farfetch, MyTeresa.com and MatchesFashion.com currently experience. MyTeresa's shares have lost 90% of their value since the pandemic boom of 2021. And I know this personally because I did invest in um, uh, my MyTeresa's my shares a few years ago, and now they are worth almost zilch, my uh, my stake in, uh, in MyTeresa. And so anyway, and Matches Fashion has also just been acquired by the Fraser's Group for just £52 million in a deal that um, signals heavy losses for its private equity backer, Apex Partners. The long-term challenge of luxury e-commerce platforms is a drive among fashion labels to seek greater control of their products, usually at their own retail boutiques, a strategy aimed at avoiding discounts that third-party retailers like Farfetch and MyTeresa rely on to attract shoppers. Now that consumers are back to shopping in person, it is a trend that luxury brands prefer to control their own distribution. So, what is next for Farfetch? The deal between Coupang and Farfetch, announced in December 2023, will be a catastrophe for Farfetch in the medium to long term. Indeed, while such a transaction gives Farfetch a bit of a breather in terms of keeping its network of brands, boutiques, and consumers depending on the Farfetch marketplace up and running, for now, there are very few synergies, if any, between a basic, cheap retail e-commerce platform like coupang.com and a luxury e-commerce marketplace such as farfetch.com. I mean, just have a look at the coupang.com website and then have a look at the farfetch.com website, just the home pages, 
and then come back to me and let me know whether we are playing in on the same level here in the same customers category are we are these two platforms focusing on the same kind of customers i don't think so not at all there is no chance that the korean management of coupang will get the exclusive analytics distribution strategy of its asset farfetch.com with the risk of diluting the brand farfetch by lowering the standards of selection of the boutiques selling on the farfetch marketplace when that happens, no fashionista or luxury shopper will ever buy anything on Farfetch again. Also, Farfetch can kiss goodbye to its glitzy deals with luxury partners such as Richmond, Ferragamo, Burberry, etc. The positioning of Farfetch, now that it is becoming an asset of Coupang, is varying from being luxury to mainstream retail. Also, the top brass of at Farfetch will be replaced by a team of South Koreans who not only understand very little about what constitutes the makeup of a luxury brand, but also do not have the appropriate connections and pizzazz in the luxury spheres. While Jose Neves must go, since he continuously mismanaged and negligently drove Farfetch into the ground, the South Korean new guard who will eventually replace him will fail if they do not quickly and efficiently buy extremely expensive know-how and strategic advice about and connections within the luxury sectors in Europe and the USA to turn Farfetch around and to keep it as a thriving going concern for the luxury fashion industry.